Procalx University. You don't know what you don't know. Welcome to Procalx University. I'm Tom Platini, your instructor. Today, in Introduction to Heat Loads, we're going to talk about what causes us to need heating and air conditioning and really understand how different components in your home will have a dramatic effect on how big or small your air conditioning and heating system should be. To make it easier to understand, I'm going to focus on air conditioning. However, just about every item we mention is a factor for heating or air conditioning. So let's start from the top and work our way down. Hello, Mr. Sunshine. Isn't it a beautiful day? So as the sun rays shine down upon our building's roof, we are generating heat. The heat hits the roof and based on the materials used, shingles, tiles, metal, plywood, the heat will penetrate the roof at different rates. Well, what I mean by rates is it will take longer or shorter time for the heat or cold to penetrate the material. The longer it takes the heat or cold to move through an item, the better insulator that item is. Even the color of the roof makes a huge difference as to how much heat or cold penetrates it. Have you ever touched a black car in the hot sun? Ouch! How about a white car? Night and day, huh? Once the heat penetrates the roof material, we have a few options to help insulate the building from the heat. We can insulate the roof deck either on top or below, or we can put the insulation in the ceiling. There are many opinions on both sides of the fence for roof deck insulation versus ceiling insulation. However, let's look at it from the heat load standpoint. First, let's insulate the ceiling. With ceiling insulation, we typically would vent the attic through either the soffits, which have a ratio of one square foot of soffit venting to 150 square foot of attic, or ridge vents in the roof line, which must have one square foot for every 300 square foot of attic, which helps to lower the temperature inside the attic after the 92 degree heat penetrates the roof. However, if it's 92 degrees outside, even when vented, some attics can get up to 140 degrees. Then the insulation on the ceiling helps to reduce or stop the heat in the attic from penetrating into the home. But think about this. If I start with a 92 degrees outside, then the temperature in the attic is greatly increased into the mid hundreds, forcing my ceiling insulation to work even harder and causing me to spend money on additional insulation values thicker insulation to stop the heat from getting into my home. Does that really make sense? Yes, you could put an attic fan in to help remove the heat, but isn't that just putting a band-aid on a problem? On top of that, if your duct work for the AC system is in the attic, you are forcing your duct system to work overtime to ward off those higher temperatures, or again, you would have to have thicker duct work to withstand the temperatures. Now let's take a look at option two. If we put the insulation under the roof deck, which is typically done with a spray foam material, we stop the heat, or at least a majority of it, from even getting into the attic. On top of that, if the ductwork is in the attic, the attic will be much cooler, greatly reducing the load on the ductwork, and hence your home would need less AC to overcome the additional heat load. Now, with this type of insulation system, typically we do not vent the attic. You close off all venting. By doing this, you make the attic part of the thermal envelope of the home. You will get some air mixture between your home and attic and cause the temperature in the attic to only be about 10 to 20 degrees different from inside the home. When using this option, we have been able to save tons of air conditioning. This throws the theory of four to 500 square foot per ton so far out the window, it's crazy. The next biggest heat load we will discuss are the walls. The walls are actually third down the list of the highest heat loads. Windows, ceilings, walls, and ducts are your top four biggest heat loads for most buildings in that order. For your walls, it's pretty simple. However thick you can make them with insulation, the less heat will penetrate them. So a two by four wall with R13 insulation will allow more heat into the building than a two by six wall with R20. And just like the roof, the color of the walls makes a huge difference also. Again, years ago, we didn't insulate walls as much, if at all. So four or 500 square foot per ton worked. Today, that rule of thumb is like a broken clock. It's right twice a day. That means that of 86,400 seconds in a day, 
that is about 0.00002314% correct. Not sure I like those odds. This is the main reason to get a certified professional to perform a heat loss heat gain, manual J for residential and manual N for light commercial to ensure you get the proper tonnage. Next are the windows. This is the most overlooked item and number one item which determines how much heat or air conditioning you need. People spend tens of thousands of dollars on double pane, triple pane, vinyl, low E, argon filled windows, then allow someone to size the house based on square foot per ton. Are you kidding me? With windows, you must also take into consideration, is there a bug screen? As this will reduce the amount of heat. Is there an overhang from the roof? Will there be shading on the inside? Two other items missed a lot are how close other homes are as this will minimize the amount of direct sunlight and reduce heat load. Also, what type of ground is in front of the window? Some surfaces are much more reflective than others and can have a dramatic effect on the window loads, such as new concrete versus grass. Just by changing the windows, depending on the size of the building, you could reduce the air conditioning needed by tons. Oh, and just in case you haven't taken one of our other courses yet, a ton of air conditioning is 12,000 BTUs. That's a British thermal unit. Not going to get into what that means in this course, but we will have more detailed courses later on. ProCalx University. You don't know what you don't know.